Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to share some websites with you that you really need to check out. These websites have helped me as a teacher and they're going to help you to be more productive and also some of them are a little bit fun as well. I think it's important for us to instill a bit of fun into our classrooms. And stick around until the end because I have a special bonus that I want to share with you. So this first website that I want to share for you is a good resource for you to find illustrations, little snippets of art that you can put into your Canvas courses or that you can share with your students. So if you go to undraw.co, then you can find all of these illustrations right here. And what's interesting is that you can determine your color schemes for the illustrations. If you have your own hex code, then you can enter that in, or you can browse for common color schemes. So once you find a color scheme that you like, you can choose from hundreds of these illustrations. And if you have something specific that you're looking for, then you can enter it in the search. You can also toggle between illustrations and sketch drawings. And once again, determine the color scheme that you're interested in. And there's all kinds of great resources for you. When you find something that you like, simply click on it and you can download the PNG that you can upload into your Canvas course. It's a great way to find interesting sketches and illustrations that you can use in your classes. The next website I want to tell you about is one that I've gone to for many years, and this is W3Schools. And if you're regular to my channel, you know that I'm always looking for interesting ways that I can present content, especially in the Canvas environment. And oftentimes the approach I take is that I think, I want to do something. I want to be able to display information in a certain way. Is there a way that I can do that using HTML and CSS? And will that work in Canvas? So I usually start with my question, and then I go online to find the answer. And a lot of times I'll find my answer here on W3Schools. So if we look at simply the HTML portion, if I click on learn HTML, then they have tutorials for various different HTML things that I can do within Canvas. For example, if I click on HTML images, then I can find how can I put images into my web page. In my case, it would be my Canvas page. And then they have examples called try it yourself. And this is a great little editor that allows me to change some of the properties. I can make a change and then I can run it and I can see what that change looks like. So my philosophy really is that for somebody to be a good online professor or a good instructional designer or content creator, it's important to know the fundamentals of HTML and even some CSS. So W3Schools is a great way that you can learn and you can practice before you even get into the Canvas environment. This next resource is a Google tool that I use. I have it bookmarked and what it does is it's a speech to text tool, but it's nothing that you have to install. You can just use it right in Chrome. So how you would use this tool is you determine what language you're going to speak and then you click on the microphone and then you can dictate and you can speak for as long as you like, just as it says up here, you can talk for five minutes or for an hour and it'll just transcribe as you go along. So to demonstrate this in practice, I'll read a little excerpt from Make It Stick, The Science of Successful Learning by Peter Brown and his colleagues. And I'll just start by clicking on the microphone button and then I start talking. Remember that difficulties you overcome with greater cognitive effort will more than repay you in the depth and durability of your learning. Once I have that, I click the microphone button, I can copy and paste, and it does look like I do have to proofread it a little bit, but it at least gives me a good start. Another fantastic website that I go to quite often is coolers.co, and this is a great way that I can make a color scheme. I'm gonna click generate, and I'm signed in. You don't have to sign in, but it's great if you can create an account because then when you create color schemes, you can be saving those color schemes for later. And so it starts here with a random generator. And if I like some of these colors, I can lock them down. So maybe I'll lock a couple of these down and then press spacebar, And then I can view some of the other options as well. And there's a wealth of information just right here. I can view different shades and tones if I'd like. I can drag and drop these to move them around. I have access to the color code and I can copy that color code right there. If I wanted to, I could even upload a photo from my computer, and then I can create a color palette based on the colors that are in that photo. What makes this useful for me also is that I can determine how this is portrayed with various different types of colorblindness. And we know that there's lots of different types of colorblindness, and so I can click on these and I can see the original colors, and then I can see how it would look like with somebody who has that certain type of colorblindness. And that might help me inform the colors that I'm choosing for my color scheme. If you create a palette that you really like, then you can export it and you can save it for later as well. If you want even more information about the colors, then you can click on the view palette and that gives you all of the various values for each of the colors in your color scheme that you've chosen. So again, just all kinds of ways that you can explore these color palettes and you can even discover popular color palettes to get further inspiration. 
It's a very useful tool, it's very fun to explore, and they even have mobile apps. Another tool that I use quite frequently in the videos that I create, as well as some of my online content, is this website called Hipster Ipsum. And there's a lot of different ways that you can have lorem ipsum, that you can just have filler text for the content that you're creating. But this one I think is fun because it's a little bit trendy. And so you determine how much dummy text do you want? Do you want five paragraphs maybe? Do you want it to be hipster neat or maybe hipster with a shot of Latin? And then you beer me and it generates some boilerplate text for you. It's something of a millennial lexicon, I would say. And you probably do want to glance through it just to make sure that, you know, everything's in order before you actually make it public facing. So once you have the text that you like, then you can just copy, paste it, and it's super easy to work with. Now, I was drawn to this last website perhaps because of my Oregonian roots. I was raised in Portland, Oregon, and so something about rain and an ambiance of precipitation just has a, a calming effect for me. And so this website, rainymood.com, is nothing more than that. It's just some background noise that you can play, and it provides you with some real gloomy white noise that you can just put on in the background. Sometimes I'll even play this as I'm playing music from Amazon or YouTube. I'll have music, but I just want those undertones of rain. It's just something calming, and sometimes as educators, we need any little bit of calm that we can introduce into our routine. So now that I live here in Florida, it doesn't always rain, but now through this website, I can make it rain whenever I feel like I need to. Now, if you've stayed with me this long, then I want to show you one of my favorite things. A lot of people know about this website, unsplash.com, and this is a place where you can find great high-resolution imagery that you can use in your courses. But something that a lot of people don't know about is that Unsplash also has a Chrome add-on, and this way, every time you open up a new tab, it's going to randomly select an image, and so you can see something new with your tab. So I have it installed on my Chrome. If I open up a new tab, then I get a new landscape. Maybe something scenic. Here's something interesting and geometric. I never exactly know what I'm going to get. And if I ever find something that I like, then you can easily download it if you want. And, sometimes, and I have a folder full of wallpapers, and so my computer randomly generates a new wallpaper every two minutes. And if you want to learn more about this particular image, then you can go into the Unsplash website where it pulls up that image. And you can see the contributor, you can see the details, you can see related photos. And so overall, it's just something nice when I click on a new tab that I can just have something new. I don't have many surprises in life at this point, but this is something that's low key. And so what do you all think? Do you use any of these tools? Are there other tools that I should know about? Comment below. I know that there's a lot more amazing things out there and I want to share it with you in upcoming videos. And if you haven't already, consider joining my community and hit that subscribe button. I'll just tell you that a subscribe to this channel would be inspirational. So that's it for this week. Keep rocking and rolling. And until next time, Happy Disney and Morning!